So welcome to Lukman IS Academy. So this is KV Ramesh, Anthropology faculty and we are seeing Anthropology PYQ series. So today's our question is, so define status and roles, distinguish between ascribed and achieved statuses. And uh, this question came in UPSC during 20, uh, 2014. So and another question, the same concept, explain the concept of status and roles in anthropology for 20 marks uh, in 2012. So how do we approach to write answer for this question? So you should remember there are certain points to be covered in this. The structure of answer should be including introduce the uses of status and roles in anthropology. That is the first point. Next one you should cover various definitions given by anthropologists regarding status and roles. That is the second point it should be come in the answer. So third point various types of statuses present in every society that we should remember third point should come and theories of study of roles. How do we approach study various roles that is the next point and you should include various case studies from simple to complex societies to identify how do we approach that study of status and roles and finally conclusion. So these are all the points. So what is that introduction means usage of status and roles in anthropology. So when an anthrop anthropologist entered into a field such as tribe or village. So the immediate task of him is studying that entire tribe or village. So he cannot randomly pick every individual and asking, asking about what activities he is doing. That means in the entire tribe or entire village, what are all the total activities performed by a different individual. So who perform these activities? This is the things we should remember. That means all the different persons who do different activities that constitute study of the society. The person's positions and each position has certain form of activities that combined collection is nothing but study of society. That positions generally we call as status held by that individual. If different for say in our society doctor, lawyer, engineer, politician, voter, there are different kind of positions held by people. If you include or sum of all these positions together and the activities associated with each position, that is nothing but study of society. So now you can see that, so the status means the positions held by an individual and the activities performed by that position is nothing but roles performed by that status. So this is the usage to describe, analyze and understand the society, we will employ this status and roles concept. So that is the introduction part you should write and second one definition. So Lenton he defined status as collection of rights and duties and he defined roles as certain behavioral expectation associated with each status. So this is easy way of definition and Giddens and Sutton he defined the roles are socially defined expectation that a person in a given status and Turner he defined roles as cluster of behavior and attitude and Bantons he defined that the roles as cluster of rights and obligation. So these from these definitions so you should including all these definition from these definitions what we could what we could interpret is status are something which is occupied by an individual. So roles are something which are all played by individual in the form of activities. So this is the thing you should remember if all the statuses and their associated roles, if we can able to sum up in a descriptive format, that is nothing but so analysis of that society. And generally these status and roles are employed by that society to bring stratification. The social stratification, first suppose you can see that, so Brahmin is a status and what kind of role he performs? The preaching Vedas, teaching knowledge. That is his role. So Kshatriyas, so they are warriors and Vaishyas, they are the agriculturists. Sudras, they are the craftsmen or supporting community. So here you can see that, so by summing of all these four statuses, 
are the roles associated that comes traditional Indian society. And here different statuses we are valued differently. From this value we are bringing social stratification. So if any society have one or other form of stratification. So what is the major basis of this stratification is nothing but this is status only. And next one each static uh, each layer or each status evolved positively negatively and so before mod, uh, modernization brahmin status were heavily or highly evaluated now sudras they entered into politics and economic domain they dominating the brahmins and etc so now you can see that the honors prestigious everything assigned to a status which could be changed over a period of time that we, uh, that means that we can term it as a social change so describing that society we can use status and roles to describe the social change in a particular society also we can use the so, uh, this status and roles concept. So this is you should write in the body including definition and their major usage in the society. So next one types of statuses in every society. In every society we will generally encounter two types of statuses. So the first type is nothing but ascribed status. So that individual who holds that a particular position, he might derive by birth itself. For suppose being a age, being a sex, being a kinship. So these are all comes into individual life through his or our birth. So that means, for suppose if you take that male is superior, female is inferior. So these kind of value which comes through birth only and they could not change in their entire life. So kinship born into a particular parents, born into a particular siblings, we could not change it. That means universally certain birth conditions are used for the basis of stratification. So those are all age, sex and kinship. But some societies, some societies we can see that class and caste also we can use as a ascribed status which comes come from the birth. So for suppose our membership into in any particular caste which comes through birth only and we could not change in our entire lifespan that caste where we born. So class some societies for say during the time of uh, medieval or so ancient time a royal family member. So they have high class in that society. So through birth only that class comes for, for them. So this is the way some societies class and caste act as a so ascribed status. But some other societies class act as a achieved status. So right now in western world, so rich class, middle class, poor class. A poor person can change his status into middle or rich through achievements. So achievements means after the birth, through his hard work or possible opportunities, whatever the means he use. So he, if he can able to change from one form to another form through his achievements, that is called achieved statuses. So for suppose if you are, if you clear this exam, your status would become into IAS. That is purely you done through your hard work. It is not anywhere connected with your birth. So this is the way achieved status are generally occupations we choose. And education, the qualifications we choose. And marital status. These are all the achieved statuses. So now we will, we will see the case studies. How these statuses and roles are organized in simple societies and advanced societies. So in simple societies, the statuses and roles are rigid in nature. So they are not subject to change in every generation. For suppose if you take that Bushmans of Kalahari Desert and Eskimos of Alaska region. So their statuses generally on the basis of age, sex and kinship. That means in simple societies what kind of statuses more we encounter means that is ascribed statuses ascribed statuses because they are egalitarian in nature there is no inequality all the people doing are same kind of activities 
so there is no stratification there is no privileges but they use generally to differentiate one people from another people or to organize their activities they use ascribed status only for the more most of the time so if you see that based on the sex so they have two statuses being a man is one status being a woman is another status being a man generally the roles associated with this status in simple society is nothing but hunting or making uh, cloth with uh, animal skins or making various weapons or sub, uh, building fire or helping the women in domestic work etc being a woman in the simple societies they have various roles so various roles uh, she will perform uh, build, building shelter for her family taking care of the children gathering and uh, you know food gathering and prepare food for the children and everything cleaning the house and etc these are all the wife status performing various roles so age wise here the children when they killed the first buck he will get maturity and he will ready to get married and he will perform husband roles and later father roles so woman the girl baby when she got physically matured she is eligible to get married and she would perform wife activities so elderly people they are generally respected uh, respected as well as they they give their status based on their activities they perform interpretation of traditions and etc so kinship so here every generation the chil the the parents will take care of the children and the children they will take care of the parents when they grown into adulthood so this is the way kinship they could not change the membership into the kin group and the when the so younger generation when they grown into adult generation they would take care of the older people this is the way kinship is organized so in more complex societies the stratification is on the basis of the stratification is on the basis of so social strata you can see that in the ancient or medieval even present time also so the king nobles commoners and slaves this is kind of social strata and a king has different roles or different activities and functions the nobles has they administer over the entire territory and when it comes to the commoner people so they do contribute for the economy they pay taxes and etc so these slaves they supporting all the communities so this is the way social strata is the basis in complex societies and they are more flexible in the initial days that means anybody can become a noble by winning that uh, war or some factions so the commoner people so a person born in a least strata he might achieve is feast through winning over the noble community or ruling community he will assume that role of the king or uh, that kind of ruler so this is the slaves that means in in complex societies we will encounter more on achieved statuses rather than these kind of ascribed statuses so diversification and specialization of the task so that also present in the complex societies for say caste system so each caste took one or another form of occupation so these occupation hereditary practicing from one generation to another gen generation and it gives that specialized abilities for them in that particular occupation so that means division of labor for organizing the specialized task and division of labor generally in simple society uh, in complex societies they follow this basis of stratification by using the statuses so from this we can conclude that simple societies have more ascribed statuses and they are more in rigid while complex societies have more in achieved statuses and they are more flexible also anybody can attain that kind of particular statuses through his achievements or through his hard work so this is the case studies so now you can see that role theory how do we approach study of various roles there are two kind of theories first one is structural theory another one is social interaction theory so structural theory had given by ralph linton banton pearson and merton so they says that the roles are nothing but social norms and expectations from the society on individual status and here you can see that so here the individual who is assuming particular status he could not question that existing status that means here the socialization in that particular society involved the individual should take care of the role rather than questioning that means 
without questioning the existing status for say if if in indian uh, medieval and ancient time if somebody born in a sudra or untouchable he should take that role that society tell them that you should take that role without questioning that existing order that is called structuralist approach of studying status and roles when it comes to the social interaction when two or more groups are involved or two or more in individual are involved if their statuses are different or unequal here that unequal person who has inferior he might do bargain to improve his status this is called interaction theory here questioning of the existing status even though they bow, uh, they bind by the statuses existing in the society sometimes they question they ask for reform that is why here the process is nothing but so role so role making so the structuralist always says that the individual individual born in a society he will go by role taking the socialization derived like that the, he should take that role whatever existed for him but in social interaction theories which was proposed by mead and turner here the individual or groups in their interaction with other individual and other groups so they put their consider bargain they demand equality in the status and etc so these are all the two types of theories so this is all about status and roles which encounter in simple societies as well as complex societies so tomorrow we will meet with another pyq thank you very much